Good day, everyone. I'd like to start with a typical 21st century household scene. Consider a teenager, like the ones I teach as a junior high school teacher. With his hands firmly planted on his mouse and keyboard, he is seated in a gaming chair resembling this race car seat. His eyes are glued so intently on the screen as he plays his favorite video game that not even a flying cockroach would make him bat an eyelid. He is oblivious to the outside noise as his ears are encased in this noise-canceling headset complete with a microphone to communicate with his friends while playing. He sits unmoved practically for hours as he picks up wins and losses in equal measure. Suddenly, the door opens with a thud behind him. It is his own parent clutching what looks like an important-looking document. The teenager, so gripped by the game in front of him, still doesn't take notice. Losing patience, the parent stomps forward, then taps the teenager's shoulder to get his attention. With his eyes still on the screen, the teenager replied, Yes. The parent finally puts down the document, and it just so happens that it is the school's report card. And so the parent angrily taps his fingers on what seems to be numbers on the report card before exclaiming, Bumagsak ka na naman sa class mo eh. Kaka-computer mo yan eh. Whether you could relate more to the teenager or the parent in that scene, it is an all-too-familiar household tableau today. We are simply hooked into video games, with an estimated 2.7 billion gamers in the world today, with 43 million of them coming from the Philippines. In fact, even the Southeast Asian Games hosted by the Philippines in 2019 had eSports as an official medal event. So despite its undisputed rise as a form of media, video gaming still carries a certain stereotype as a taboo. They say it decreases productivity and then develops unwanted habits among our students. But on that note, I would like to raise a question. Is video gaming really a negative? Does it really lead to unwanted habits developing among our children in life? Do parents really need to stare down at their children and say, Kaka computer mo yan eh, as the primary excuse for academic underachievement? Now, what if the academe itself could turn the system on its head? What if education turns to gaming as a tool rather than view it as a bad habit? Now, this might sound like an absurd suggestion, especially coming from a teacher like me. But I am a teacher who grew up pretty much like the kid in my story. I was born an only child who was lucky enough to be gifted a Game Boy Advance as a kid. It was faithfully accompanied by my favorite game at the time, Pokemon Red. Growing up without a playmate proved to be a very lonely experience, so my dad, ever fascinated by technology, decided to pick up his own Game Boy Advance and then asked me to teach him how to play it. Pretty soon, he would come home from work, and we would spend our nights playing Pokemon together in bed or in the sofa. He would be the trainer wanting to be the very best like no one ever was, pretty much like the game's main hero, Ash Ketchum, while I would be his ever-liable sidekick, wanting, to, wanting him to do well and be his number one fan, much like Pikachu. If you picture the scene through this old photograph, you would think that this was a classic father and son bonding moment over a bedtime storybook. But instead of a storybook here, we were playing a game. What's the difference? In a storybook, the chapters are already written, while a game is still waiting for its own chapters to be written. It involves creativity and strategic thinking to figure out how you will write those chapters in your own unique way. It also encourages family bonding and collaboration, as I played like a caddy to my dad, who was pretty much like your eager golfer. It placed me, the child, in the unique position of being a mentor to a person of authority like my father. It thus gave me the confidence to be more assertive with my ideas and then be more fearless in taking the initiative. In doing all of these, I would be developing my own communication skills. All of these attributes would serve me well later in life as I became an engineer and a teacher. 
eventually, my love for gaming would only keep on growing. And soon I would discover a video game in my college years that is new to me, Minecraft. Minecraft is essentially a virtual Lego set that will allow you to create anything and everything that you can conceptualize in your own head. My affinity for the game began when I built this replica of the Ateneo High School with my best friend during a week-long class suspension. Now, if you're wondering how on earth did I find time to do this in college, it was because there was a typhoon. And that gave me the platform and the confidence to execute more projects, either individually, like my recreations of the Church of Yasu and the Blue Eagle Gym, or collaboratively, as the admin of a once popular server called Pinoycraft. This unique and rich gaming background is what followed me as I returned to the Ateneo de Manila Junior High School a few years back to begin teaching physics. Now, initially, I would admit reluctance in sharing this gamer side of me to my students because, like any new teacher, I was just trying to master the basics, not make mistakes, and of course, maintain that professional and serious aura of someone who works in the academe. I realized soon, however, that my young students would discover my gaming past themselves because they have undoubted and unmatched research skills in social media. So rather than continue hiding the side of me, which was pointless, I decided that there was great potential here to use my background as a gamer to enhance my experience as a teacher. I knew from my childhood experience that it was not only cool to have a gamer parent like my dad, but it was also enriching. Many skills that would not have been gained otherwise were thus imparted onto me. And aside from those that I mentioned earlier, games like Minecraft offer this unique opportunity to inspire future engineers and architects with its endless tapping of spatial reasoning skills. After all, this was very much aligned to my personal motive to try teaching, and that was to inspire students of my upbringing to take up my field of science, which was engineering. And so with all of that, I said, you know what, why not? And so I began my experiment last year by integrating it into our discussion on gravity. If that concept is tangible in the game of Minecraft, then why not use it to teach students how to compute for vertical distance and time of flight? So this highly engaged a lot of my students, and they only clamored for more. And so, being a showman that I am, not wanting to disappoint them, I prepared a follow-up video for our next topic on projectile motion. Projectiles, uh, to those of you who know, are one of the most notoriously difficult topics in all of physics because that is the one that involves really brutal calculations. And yet, it gave me the opportunity to conduct a Minecraft experiment. And so I asked my students, at what angle would the projectile hit its maximum range? So the answer, as equations would prove, is 45 degrees. But to be able to show it in the game myself, through experimentation and demonstration, is something that made the concept much more memorable to the students. In fact, a lot of them, when we were asked to evaluate the school year, cited it as one of their most memorable experiences in my entire physics class. And so, I continued to integrate gamified experience whenever possible in physics. But, alas, last year, the pandemic struck. We were all placed into lockdown. And eventually, schools across the globe had to shift online. A lot of the cool science demos and activities that we had envisioned as teachers just had to be shelved. And I'm sure that this was a problem not just in science, but across the many subjects. But then I realized something. It has suddenly thrust video games to be more relevant than ever before. With social gatherings now curtailed, it suddenly became the only viable way for people to bond with their friends. With recreational and sporting activities limited, it suddenly became the only way to channel this desire to compete and to tap into your tactile and motor skills. Now, while many industries slumped in the pandemic, more people actually bought video game consoles because they sought a reprieve from the boredom in their own homes. 
many students and even teachers like myself turned to video games to fill this side of me that was just simply taken away all of a sudden. And so that was where I sensed the opportunity. Why not take the students into the video game myself as I taught over video calls? Now that was a wild idea, but if you think about it, a virtual learning setup perhaps called for a virtual learning environment. This is one where you could demonstrate concepts like in a physical classroom, but in more relatable terms, like through the use of video games such as Minecraft. For instance, when we tackled electricity this year, why not build circuits in Minecraft using the game's redstone circuits? When teaching about motion, speed, and acceleration, why not show them this driving game where I could accelerate my car, so I would just floor the throttle, and then I would go down the highway and then ask them, okay, what is my average speed? What is my acceleration? Based on what they see me play, they can actually calculate this, and then I could derive some concepts in physics about that. And this is my personal favorite experience last year. I was tasked to make this reflection about important lessons related to the environment. And so that is where I sense the opportunity to demonstrate that cutting trees and leaving the land barren without any resources in my virtual world just means that we need to conserve and we need it to be more sustainable. So all of these are just samples, but it allowed me to take my science lessons into engagements that I would never have envisioned possible in a traditional setup. A new context simply calls for a new approach, but one still grounded on pedagogy and curriculum, where one ensures that the learning objectives are still met. These gamified learning experiences truly benefited my online class experience, but it does not end there. Because beyond the four walls of the science classroom is the potential to integrate video games into teaching many different fields. So let me brainstorm some ideas on how to use this in the different subjects that we have in junior high school. In Christian life education, why not use games like Minecraft to build grand churches and then make the students tour these hallowed grounds and then appreciate what they stand for? The same could be said for Filipino. Why not recreate and reimagine the worlds of Rizal and Balagtas in a modern light, like through a video game in Minecraft? For Araling Panlipunan, why not make the students play the many games based on history? They will not only relive historical events, but also be placed in the shoes of historical figures as they wrestle with faithful decisions. For English, there is limitless potential to integrate elements of a story in analyzing the gameplay of such video games. I also remember back in high school when we read about The Odyssey, that was our novel, I think, in uh, third year high school, and memories of that novel are evoked whenever I play this game called Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is set in ancient Greece. So I was thinking, why not play this game, which actually has an education mode, and even talk to the important characters one could find in the book to enrich your experience. Now for math and computer, these are perhaps the two subjects that form the lifeblood of the video games we love. Why not explore the codes and the formulas that run the engines of our favorite games? Why not make the students find out for themselves how all of these scores, stats, probabilities, or hit points are calculated? For music and art, why not explore the underrated beauty of the compositions and graphical designs that come into our video games? This song, for instance, Baba Yetu, is actually a Grammy Award-winning theme song of a certain video game called Civilization IV. So if it's that good to have a Grammy Award, then why not analyze what makes these modern works of art beautiful and then elicit concepts in contemporary music and art. For PE, in a time when it is very difficult to envision sporting events, why not fully embrace esports as a way to foster competition and discipline? Why not expand our current efforts to try esports and maybe even entertain thoughts of establishing a varsity team in esports for Ateneo and then compete with other schools? Even our Christian service and immersion program, this is a subject where students would commit 
to making a fundraising project for charitable causes. Why not tap into the many gamers and live streamers in the student population? Why not encourage them to use their gaming talents to help organize charity live stream events? This is just the surface where I simply cited ideas on the top of my head on how gaming could be used across the many subjects. But it is very clear that much could be done when education embraces gaming. It is something that the students love, something that teachers like me love, and it is also something that is a very powerful tool in the media today. Now to tie us further into the idea as Athenians, I would like to recall one of our Jesuit mantras. This is one I learned from Father Jet Villarin during one of our Ignatian spirituality workshops. It was one that I admit took me a while to grasp, and that was tantum quantum, which basically means insofar as. It calls us to use different means insofar as they lead us to our goal, or to remove these means insofar as they hinder us from our goal. It quickly became my favorite Jesuit Latin phrase because it is a call for us to be creative. If video games can help us achieve our goals as formators, then why not? If using video games will help my students develop many life skills to improve their classroom engagement, to inspire them into new viable careers, and most importantly, to help mold them to become Christ-centered young men of competence, conscience, compassion, and commitment, then why not? And so, let us return to the story earlier. The parent with arms crossed. Parks to the teenager, kaka-computer mo yan eh. But what if we, as teachers, can make the teenager and the parent imagine this scene differently? What if we can actually make them see the potential in video games to enrich their lives? Perhaps then, the teenager would proudly reply, Nagawa ko ang lahat ng mga ito at dahil ito sa kakakomputer ko po. Thank you.